ahead and worship him. Go ahead and worship him and adore him this morning. Give him glory, give him honor. He deserves it. He is our savior. He is our deliverer. He is our redeemer. He is our sustainer. Can you just give him glory this morning? Can you just give him glory? Give him glory. Give him glory. The fact that you are standing in his presence this morning, he deserves the honor. He deserves praise. Can you acknowledge him this morning that he has been your all in all? He is the one that protects you. He is the one that grants you safety on the road and at home in the office. Just worship him this morning. That you are alive and well. Thank him for the gift of life. Thank him for the good health that he gives you. The Lord didn't forget to wake you up this morning. It is not because you gave him money. It is because it is not because you gave him any bribe. The Lord didn't forget to wake you up. He continues to supply you with oxygen that you need every every second. The Lord has never failed. He continues to provide. All creatures look up to him for their daily food, including you. Despite the number of people we have in this world, the Lord knows you by name. He knows you by name. Oh, he knows you by name. Thank you, Father. you by name. He knows you by name. He knows what goes on in your mind, in your heart. That burden that you are carrying. He knows about it. He sees everything. He knows my name. He knows my name. Thank him because he knows your name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls down from your eyes. He sees each tear that falls. Oh, he hears you when you call. When you call on him this morning, he knows your name. The Lord knows my name. Lord knows your name. He knows every thought that goes on in your heart. He sees every tear that falls down from your eyes. And he will hear you when you call. Will you call on him this morning concerning that issue in your heart? Please lift it up to him. That issue that has defiled all solutions. Raises up to the Father who has all the power to handle every situation of our lives. He has come. Let him hear your voice. Be tired of that situation and lift it up to him. And he will answer you. He has promised to answer when you call. 
he said before you call he will answer why you are yet speaking he will do that which you have asked of him when the church gathered together concerning peter the lord answered them that while they were still praying peter appeared in their midst that they couldn't believe that is the god we are serving the lord will rain his heaven concerning you this morning can you just lift that situation up to the lord talk to him about it he's here and he's giving you this opportunity to call on him to call on him he has said he has not asked you to worship him in vain There are blessings in his presence. And that is why the word of God says, We shall be satisfied with the goodness of his house. Call on him this morning, and you will be satisfied with the goodness of his house. You will be satisfied with the goodness of this corporate anointing. Just make sure you call on him for that issue. morning we thank you because you are here even before we came because you are the omniscient the omnipotent the omnipresent God you are in all the places at the same time you are in all the ages at the same time Lord all power in heaven and on earth belongs to you lord we want to thank you because you love us so dearly that every time what is going on in your heart is good about us because you are inherently good you are impartially merciful lord we glorify you this morning we honor you because of this privilege to always have you in our presence. Lord, we count ourselves fortunate because anytime any president is visiting any community, everybody troops to that place just to go and see the president. That is the earthly one. But you are the king of kings. Lord, from eternity to eternity you reign. No one installed you into that position and no one can impeach you. And you are not going to resign. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Lord, we have come to you this morning. We ask, O oh God, that you will rend your heaven. 
to attend to every situation of our lives in the name of Jesus that at the end of this service we will not have to tell people that we went to church to worship that they will see it in our lives because of the good that you would have done in our lives in the name of Jesus we pray O God of heaven that you will cause your word to come and dispel every form of darkness around us in the name of Jesus. You don't have to worry and don't you be afraid Joy comes in the morning Troubles they don't last always all have a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hand.
Hallelujah. My life is in God's hands. And I know that whatever is committed to his hands, he will keep very faithfully and jealously even unto the eternal day. So I'm secure. I'm safe in him. Amen. Amen. Is that your confession? I am safe and secured in him. Hallelujah. All right, we want to welcome you to another Mission Sunday in New Estate Baptist Church. The very first Sunday of every month is given unto the Lord to pay attention to the issues of the commission that he left for us. A commission that he is very, very passionate about. In fact, because of which he laid down his own life. That's how serious this commission is to him and still is still today and is for all of us. New St. Baptist Church attempts to raise every Christian as a child of God who is on mission with God. So you and I are people on mission with God. And what is the mission of God? The mission of God is that the gospel message must be taken to everywhere in the entire world. That's why we hold on to Christ for the whole world. We want to thank God because we have another opportunity to make emphasis today on the call of God that is upon our lives, the mandate of taking this gospel to the hinterlands. By the grace of God, after the service today, we will have our regular mission hour. I do recognize that a number of us are still struggling uh, with the idea of being in Sunday school after service or being in the mission hour. I like to see here that the chariot is moving and moving very fast. And it will be very important for you to join the chariot because it's traveling very fast. And you cannot afford to be left behind. May this year be a different year for you. You have a different attitude so that you can do what God expects you to do. When we finish service and hold, I mean, we sit in Sunday school, please sit there with the word of God and interact with it. It's just another one hour after service. Many of us, after the service, you meal around in the compound. You are neither in Sunday school, neither have you gone away. You are milling around, and before you turn your back, one hour has passed, and you have not used it well for the benefit of your soul and the edification of your spirit. I consider that as a, as a waste. It doesn't matter the kind of networking, minister, uh, business networking you were doing out there during that one hour. I consider that you wasted that one hour. Because God was beckoning on him to be, on you to be in business with him for just that one hour. And you were busy doing something else. Please, I'd like you to cultivate the habit of sitting with God's word and yearning for more of it. This year, I pray that your attitude will be different. Amen. Amen. You know, he told Peter, James, and John, hang on with me for, for and then he went on to pray, came back, found them doing something else. He said, uh-uh. Couldn't you be with me? Couldn't you stay on with me for just one hour? Can't you give that one hour after service for Sunday school or for mission hour by becoming a part of one mission age group or the other according to where, you're, where you fall? Please, let our attitude change. And I trust God that we will have more and more people coming into Sunday school and more and more people being part of the uh, mission age group activity that takes the gospel to the hinterlands. Please be a stakeholder, a sharer. In fact, a shareholder in the advancement of God's kingdom. May God bless you as you do that in Jesus' name. This morning we will be receiving God's word. But before we receive God's word, I'd like to welcome in our midst our sister, Omolara Merotinwo. I don't know if I pronounced that well. Sister Lara, where are you? Okay. Sister Lara, you are welcome. Omolara is a member of the New Covenant Baptist Church, Akute, which is a daughter church of the New Covenant Baptist Church, Ijayagege, which is a daughter of the New Estate Baptist Church, Suruleri, which is also a daughter of the Yaba Baptist Church. Lagos. Amen. I have just helped to trace her ancestry. So, brethren, you are receiving in this service one of our granddaughters. 
Put your hands together for Molara. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Welcome to New Estate Baptist Church. All right. We also have with us Brother Jeremiah Olafimiho. This one I can pronounce very well. Jeremiah Olafimiho, you are welcome. He is also a member of the New Covenant Baptist Church, Akute, which is a daughter church of the New Covenant Baptist Church, Ichayagigi, which is also the daughter of the New Estate Baptist Church, Surulere, and by the grace of God, the daughter of Yaba Baptist Church, Lagos. Amen. All right, you are welcome, Brother Jeremiah. That's another grandson. We celebrate you. Welcome to New Estate Baptist Church. May the Lord bless you as you worship. Please feel free because you are just at home. Amen. All right. Thirdly, we also have our sister, Adenike Adewi. Sister Adenike Adewi. She is a member of the New Covenant Baptist Church, Akute, the wife of the Reverend Timothy Adewi, who is seated in front of her. All right, you may be seated. You are very much welcome to New Estate Baptist Church. Reverend Timothy Adewi and his wife are serving in the New Covenant Baptist Church, Akute. All right, I don't need to trace the ancestry again. So you know it very well. He's one of the associate pastors of uh, the Reverend Musa Zakari, who has been our friend in church here. He's serving as the minister in charge of administration and media and I think logistics or something. Research. Okay, he serves in, in the portfolio of minister in charge of administration, media and research. By the grace of God, he is worshipping with us today. We invited him to share in our mission hour. I want to trust God that God will put God has put a word in his mouth that he is going to be sharing with us in the next 45 minutes. All right. I'm going to ask you to please stand and uh, let's receive the ministry of the Reverend Timothy Adewi. You are very much welcome to New Estate Baptist Church. God bless you. Amen. Please be seated. I want to thank the Lord for the privilege given to me to bring his counsel to us uh, on this edition of our Mission Emphasis Sunday. I thank my father and the Lord, Reverend Kunat, for extending this hand of fellowship uh, to me also to be able to function in this capacity this morning. Uh, as been, been said, I'm not going to say so much again. I have two message or messages to bring to us. One of it looks very simple to me. I remember uh, Professor D.G. Aegon, you always say uh, his assignment was a simple one in our, when I was in the seminary. When he was called upon, any time he was called upon to introduce a guest or to receive some guests into the seminary, we say uh, it was a simple assignment. So I have one simple one. And I have the second one, which I'm afraid because it's a little weightier. Uh, so I'll start with the simple one so that maybe God will find me giving more grace to push high ahead with the weightier one. The simple one is to bring you greetings from my pastor, Pastor Musa Sekeri. Uh, the first time I came to this assembly, I came with him uh, just like that young man there was sitting in the congregation. So also it's another privilege for me to stand there. Also, I was talking about uh, granddaughter church. Yes. But in my mind, I was looking at it from my own uh, tradition. There's really no granddaughter or grandson. We only have Mami Aga. <laughs> so I've come to the house of Mami Aga this morning. Amen. Because in our place, every child is your child. Uh, so I'm happy to be in the house of Mami Agba this morning. The entire church bring their greetings to you also, and the pastorate uh, also. That is the 
um, simpler part of my job. The second one is the message that the Lord has uh, put in my mouth to bring to this assembly this morning. I want to sing a song. It's a very simple one, which I know you will catch after the first time I sing it. The song says, Hermes of God left in this place, we must glorify our Lord. It's not optional. It's a must do. If there's any essence, any reason why we are here is to do this task to glorify our Lord. And it goes thus. Armies of God left in this place. We must glorify our God. Armies of God left in this place. We must glorify our God. We are the armies of God. Yes, that is left in this place. We must glorify our God. We are the army of God. That is left in this place. We must Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you because you are faithful. We have come to look into the scriptures this morning. We ask that you will speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way in the midst of your children. Our gathering is unto you, not unto any man. Beyond the ideas of man, Lord, speak to your children. Thank you because you have answered our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Now the way there matters. As I consider the topic, which is the urgency of the Great Commission, and as I consider the church, the uh, New Estates Baptist Church, considering the enormous of uh, our mission endeavor in, the, uh, in Nigeria and beyond, I was like, so what else am I going to say? But the Lord gave me a, a, a message that is a little difficult, but I will say it all the same. So let's please turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. I'm going to read two passages and then I will bring the word. Luke chapter 17. I will read from verse 4 Luke 17 sorry I will read from verse 7 Luke 17 verse 7 it goes thus but which of you I read from the King James Passion but which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle we say unto him, by and by, when he is come from the feed, go and sit down to meet, and will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup, and guard thyself, and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth it thank the servant? Because he did the things that were commanded of him, I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. May the Lord bless his word into our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The second passage is the book of John. John chapter uh, 4. I'm going to read verse 31 to 38. The John chapter 9, verse 1 to 4 is a, uh, another familiar story. I will make reference to that even as I go on the message. John chapter 4, I will read verses 
31 to 38. Gospel of John chapter 4. I read from verses verse 31 through to 38. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Have any man brought him hot to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eye. Everybody say that. Take the next statement. And look on the feet. Let's complete that verse together. For they are white already to harvest. Thank you. I continue from verse 36. And he that repeat, receiveth wages and gathered fruit unto life eternal. That both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And hearing is that saying true. One soweth and another reapeth. I send you to reap that whereon he bestowed no labor. Other men labored and ye entered into their labors. May the Lord bless his word into our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The reward of stewardship is one major issue that the Lord impressed upon my spirit as I consider the urgency of a great commission. We know that a great commission is a commission, a command, you know, a task, an order that Christ gave to the church and that the church, if must fulfill the essence of his existence, does not have an alternative than to carry it out. The church cannot claim to be a body of Christ if it does any other function aside great commission. The body of Christ was given to the world. It was pierced on the cross. It was buried, caged, but glory be to God that he resurrected and ascended to heaven. But that is leaving us with a very crucial task as his disciples. I look at how Jesus took the key from hate, from death, from Satan. The Bible says he ascended to the high places. He led captivity captive in his train and he, he gave gifts unto his children. He did not only ascend to the high places, the Bible says he went into the heads. He conquered death. He conquered Satan. He collected all these keys. He collected the authority not only in heaven but on, on heart and even beneath the heart. But he touched my heart to realize that Jesus did not go to heaven with those authorities. What did he do, please? He gave it to the church. He gave it to the church. So, why did Jesus equip the church this heavily? Why did Jesus pay in advance all that is required for the harvest of soul, for the global harvest into his kingdom? Why did Jesus came, live a lifestyle of mission, died, and then empowered the church to stand in his place? It's because mission is the heartbeat of the Father. It's the will of the Father. It's key you know, to the plan of the Father right from the foundation of the world. Time will not permit me to trace the historical background and some of, of, of such things from the foundation of the world. But we shall look at some of the issues that are raised in these scriptures very briefly, even before we continue to pray. 
So you realize that the urgency of the Great Commission is in order to ensure the global soul affairs and the global soul nurture. So as I look at the task, the, the, the reward of stewardship, I realize that if God has given us this much assignment as his body, and we as a church, in our organization, in our establishment, in our structure, we carry out this task even day by day. You know, it gladdens my heart to realize that mission emphasis for us was not an annual thing. It was a monthly issue. It gladdens my heart to realize that mission for us is a lifestyle. So I keep asking myself, if we are such committed to the issue of mission, what else? And the Lord says, if you have a servant, and you send that servant to the field, and the servant went to the field and carried out your bidding and comes back, will you have that servant to sit down and eat? He says, no. So it dawned on me that the reward of the worship is actually more task. Amen. Is somebody afraid of more task? That's why I say I said earlier on that it's a little weird here. Oh, I wish God would give me the opportunity of saying, well done, fire on, you know, and stuff like that. But no. He says, more task. Can somebody say more task? But does it mean that God doesn't have a way of saying, oh, well done, my servant, ten times to your joy? You know, of course, we'll talk about all of that if God permits us as time goes on. But the truth of the matter is the fact that there is a goal that is set ahead of us. There is an extent of the global affairs that God has destined the local church to cover. And until when the task is finished, He will continue to give us more tasks. But somebody says, can we finish the task? Maybe we'll look at it as time goes on, whether we can actually finish the task. So the global affairs and the global nurture is a requirement if God will fulfill his agenda as at the beginning. In the beginning, God wants a head where his will is done on daily basis. Where darkness does not have a place, an inch to operate. But it's a pity that darkness hijacks that uh, entire plan as it was in the beginning and introduced entropy to the work of God. From that point in time, God desired that there will be mission on earth that his son is going to champion, is going to lead in order to bring source, in order to bring global harvest of life into his kingdom and in order to nurture people even in readiness for eternity. Global harvest and global nurture in order to establish God's will on earth, in order to entrench his kingdom, in order to demonstrate his power. The power of the kingdom is one reason that made God to infest so much of it into his children so that they can demonstrate it, the demonstration of the power of the kingdom. So in this later time, in this century, the dimension of mission is shifting its base from the traditional way now, if you look at what happened in the time of Jesus, you realize that he, he went everywhere he could go. The disciples came in, they demonstrated great power, and they also went everywhere they could go. But in our time, you realize that the world suddenly has turned into a global village. The man who coined the, the language global, uh, uh, the, called the world a global village, you know, was actually talking from the perspective of what Christ saw, or, or what God saw when he sent Jesus into the world. Because he sent Jesus into the entire world. And when Jesus was given the Great Commission, he also gave the Great Commission to, the, to, to his children to go into the entire world. But because it is not difficult to travel to America anymore, most of our children, they have fans all over everywhere. 
they have been to places that you, can, you, could, you, you could never imagine, even right under your roof. That makes the issue of great commission to take into a, 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 a different dimension. That if the church must achieve its goal of outreach, we must carry the great commission even into the virtual world. We must carry the great commission even into the social world. But it pained my heart to realize that there is, okay, what I call great omission in the body of Christ today. You know, you need, just need to manipulate commission, Abby, to get omission. Just a little manipulation. And what, 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 what is the manipulation required? Just take off one C and take off one hem, and then you have omission. And it's very easy. The line of demarcation is very thin. In fact, if you guys not taking and you look at the two words, you may not be able to easily pick what, what is wrong. Especially if you have commission in your mind, you can read it as omission. I mean, you can, if you have commission in your mind and you see omission, you may be tempted to read it as, as, as commission. So the church has drifted into several other things, materialism, you know, mom, mammon, and concern and care for things of the world. All of this has actually bring uh, diversion into the vision of the church. And I pray that this morning, the Lord will help our own focus as a church. We will not drift from the commission. We will not drift from the command. And we will do everything within our capacity to ensure that the kingdom of this earth has become that of our Lord and his Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All right, let's pick a few issues from our text and then we will be praying together. Commission and recommissioning to reach to touch a world in partnership with Christ is the essence of the great commission itself. Jesus uh, demonstrated the urgency of great commission in the John chapter 4 that we read. This is the first cross-cultural mission enterprise that Christ embarked on as he was going to the uh, Galilee, he, came, he must uh, go through some, uh, Samaria. When he came to the well of Saka, Saka, he met a woman there. And that became his meat. That became his focus. He left every of that thing and he began to discuss with this woman. I realized that at this point, Christ was wearied. He was, he was already tired of the journey. Actually, his disciple went to look for food because he was tired. And he said, Oga, oh don't put us into trouble. Sit down. Let's enter this city, find you food, you will eat, and after that, we can go home. It was as he was sitting down waiting for his disciples to go and bring food that this matter of, this, of, of, of the woman at Sychar, you know, came to be. So the first thing I would like to point out very clearly to us from this text is from verse 31 to 33. Let's be look at John chapter 4 again. I will attempt to read from verse 31 to 33. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat, that ye know not how. Therefore said the disciples one to another, As any man brought him how to eat, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. The first thing I see here is the fact that Jesus demonstrated the urgency of the Great Commission by demonstrating is priority. Jesus showed the urgency. Jesus indicates the urgency of the Great Commission by demonstrating its priority. The disciples' concern here was different from the concern of Jesus. I hope that we don't have some of the disciples of Christ in this assembly who has a different concern, a different mindset, a different philosophy about mission other than that of Jesus. That would be pathetic. Here, the disciples of Jesus was concerned about giving to Jesus that which was necessary. Actually, food was good. It was necessary for Jesus at this point in time. It was a need of the hour. But any time we assert the need of the hour above the global aspect of soul into the kingdom is like pursuing another priority 
another concern other than that of Jesus Christ. Sometimes the need of the hour may be a quick walk in the office. Sometimes the need of the hour may be determining between you know, spending the resources in your hands for something that is crucial and meets the need of the family or to make a contribution to, to support the mission endeavor in our group. Sometimes the need of the hour may be sharing your time with what is beneficiary to you and your family and giving it to go out on mission outreach. Anytime that you as a disciple places the, the need of the hour above the concern of outreach, above the concern of soul winning, is like pursuing another concern other than that of Jesus. May the Lord deliver us from such tendencies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Christ's food here was to do the will of God. You know, that touched me. And as a Christian, you cannot claim that you are a disciple of Christ, you are a follower of Christ, a follower of Christ if you do the will of any other person other than that of Christ, other than that of God. And it interests me to remember that the plan and the purpose of the Father is to see his will come to pass day by day. In every sphere of our existence, whether in politics, whether in the family life, whether in the church life, whether in the business place, whether in the workplace, whether in the school environment, wherever we find ourselves, there's only one thing that is more highest priority to the Father. That is to see his kingdom come to bear on every sphere of man and therefore. And you are the one that Baba is depending on. Because when you come to the issue of earth, the Bible says, heavens and the heavens of heavens, they is my throne. But the hearts I've given it to who? Amen. I've given to the children of men. So when you come to the affairs of walking on heart, it is you, it is high, it is, it is his disciples that is banking on. May we not fail God. May we not fail him from bear, bringing his kingdom, his will to pass, even in our home fronts. May we not fail him from bringing his will to pass in the business places. May we not fail him from bringing his will to pass, even in the politics arena. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The, the food that Christ says, once I eat it, I'm okay. Is to do the will of God in the matter of reaching out. The matter of mission. Once I've eaten that, Jesus says, I'm satisfied. So, Jesus demonstrates the urgency of this matter by, by the, I mean, he shows, indicates the urgency by demonstrating his priority. He shows that this is more important than food, it's more important than let's go on the, this journey. This is the reason for my existence. The second issue that I would like to raise from this passage is the fact that Jesus indicates the urgency of Great Commission for, in this passage by declaring its significance by declaring its significance in verse 34 of john chapter 4 that we read the bible says jesus said unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work when the father looked at his world and he could not continue to behold that the work of his hand is being destroyed by darkness. He sent several prophets who failed him, who none of them we can, um, we can point to as a prototype to follow. And on, at the end of it all, he sent his only begotten son. Father sent his son. That issue must be very significant. It must be very crucial. It must be a pressing matter in his heart that will make him to send his, his only son to come and rescue the world from uh, corruption. So it is the Father's will. Therefore, as a local assembly, it's important for us to understand 
that it is the Father's will who sent His Son for us to engage in His work and not to engage in it alone, to do what please. Hallelujah. Are we not following me at all? To do what? To finish it. I want to be sure that we are together. So, it is an, a, a significant responsibility upon the church both to do and to what? To finish. That's where the issue lies for us as an assembly. So I ask myself, doing I understand. What about finishing? Can we actually finish? More importantly, that you said, I mean you says the reward I'm going to give them as, as, an, as an assembly for doing my command is more task. So where is the finishing? Then the issue of Paul came to my mind. Paul says what? He said, I've, I fought a good fight. I have done what? I kept faith. I have done what? I have finished the task. And it finished very strongly. Like somebody wrote, finishing strong. I also remember that Jesus on the cross said what? It is finished. So it means it can finish. How can it finish? God has a mindset. He has an extent, a coverage. So we say it's a global affairs of soul. We talk about the global nature of it. But we can't be everywhere. But there is a portion that God has I marked for you, even an extent that we must go within a time frame. And when we as a church come to the understanding of the extent to which we must go within a time frame, then, after we have been able to do all, don't forget, the passage we read in, John, in Luke 17 says, after he has done all those things, all those things that the master has commanded him. So, the challenge of the, 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 the significance of the mission is for you, as a local church, as an individual, to be able to understand the extent that the Master has decided in His infinite mercy that He has allocated unto you, even part time, and to remain on that work until when that area has been covered. There is an extent of ministry that God has allocated to you, but it appears that you are you are becoming tired. For whatever reason. Maybe because you are not seeing expected results. It's important for you to know that the priority, the significance in the mind of God is for you to cover the extent of ministry that he has allocated to you. You are there this morning and you are getting worried. Having not completed the job that has been allocated to you, I said take courage this morning and be refired by the power of the Holy Spirit. To push on in the labor until when the job is accomplished in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe it's the difficulties that you are coming across. Maybe it's because the thing is not moving fast and quickly as you think. That is what is bringing discouragement to your group. I said this morning, every obstacles to the outreach that God has given to you will be removed. The barriers will be removed. Those barriers will be removed. And there will be an easy way into the accomplishment of the purpose of God for your life, even for this time, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So it is possible to finish. But how? That is bringing the task of knowing the mind of God. If I have an intimate relationship with God as his, as his, as, as his, his disciple, if the church has an intimate relationship with God, Christ will not hide from you what he is doing and at what level, at what dimension, and to what extent he wants you to partner with him. So that is bringing to us the challenge of a smooth and intimate relationship with God. Perhaps you are having challenges with finishing the task and it's like the task is getting muddled up in your hands. Please check first. How smooth? 
how intimate is your relationship with God as at now? When you started and God showed you a glory on the mountain of revelation, it was a time of fervency, a time of closeness with the Lord. But as you attempt to follow, and the issue of life, the storm of life began to below you, uh, it, it, it has weighed you down. It has slowed you down. It has gradually de- dissipated the fire, the light of, of communion between you and God is ebbing out gradually. If that is the, your situation this morning, it's going to be difficult to understand this. Because Jesus says, my father, I, do, I mean, I do nothing. Only what I see my father do is what I do. He said, my father loves me and he tells me how many things. Everything. Everything. But when the altar of an intimate relationship with God is, is, is not strong, when it's not there, when it's not constantly serviced, it's going to be difficult for you to hear his voice. Either as an individual or as a local assembly. May the Lord fertilize our love relationship for Him this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you have anyone here that your love relationship with Christ is dwindling already and it's like it's hebbing away, the Lord is going to feast you this morning. The Lord is visiting you right now. The Lord is visiting you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It's a significant assignment and we must finish it. We must understand his will, his purposes, the essence of the work part time, and then we must pursue it to a logical conclusion. There's no abortion with God. The Lord will take away every abortion from our lives. The Lord will take away every abortion from our ministries in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's speak another issue. Verse 35 of John chapter 4, verse 35 of John chapter 4 says, Say ye not, say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Amen. This is another, task, another very difficult message. The Lord says, lift up your eye onto the fields. They are white already for harvest, to harvest. It is difficult because to me it looks like okay, our eyes are already on the field. So what the issue of lifting up your eyes again onto the field? I see that the emphasis that the Lord is bringing to our attention to this morning is the readiness of this harvest. So Jesus illustrates or indicates the urgency of the task of of, a great commission in this passage by revealing its readiness. But that is bringing a lot of issues to my mind. For instance, if you say, look into the fields, they are already white for harvest, it takes me back to my village. I'm sorry I'm a village boy. And I remember that in the, uh, in the period when you, have, uh, you want to harvest guinea corn, for example, that's what we normally plant in my own farm. When it is ready for harvest, when you get there, you will like it. You see the heads falling, you will see everywhere white. White in this uh, context is not talking about uh, white color. You know, like this, my guy is wearing here. He's not talking about white color. He's talking about the general term that is being used to refer to a ready harvest, especially grain harvest. Because even the color of grain is not white, though. But once the, 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 the field is ready and you look at it, it's beautiful. The eggs are falling, everything is... But then, as beautiful as it is, the year that farmers will always regret and become grieved even after their harvest is, uh, after their, uh, uh, harvest is ready is when you come to the farm early in the morning and as you enter the farm you see birds all of them just scatter and what are they doing? they're picking your grains 
They are picking your grades. If care is not taken, if you don't do anything about that affairs that time, in between the period of one week, you realize that things are, I mean, everything is gone. And then apart from uh, board, there are also rodents. But then you come, next morning you realize that the grains are falling, 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 falling. You know, rodents are actually come in the night and cut all of them and eat all of them, grass cutters and the rest of them. They, they pose a lot of threats to a ready harvest. And other threats to a ready harvest is even the rain in it, itself. Because if there is a later rain, and the later rain comes upon your grain, before you affect them, what is going to happen? They begin to germinate. I'm sorry, if you are not a farmer here, or if you have not been to farm, maybe you may not find it easy to understand, my, I mean to flow along with my illustration. But I'm sure because we are in a global world, you have seen farming all over everywhere on the media. So they begin to germinate. And of what use is a germinated grain, especially when it is standing on the stalk? It's of no use. So, if the harvest is ready, to which God is sending us as a people, then is putting a, is, is put, is, is putting us on our toes. We cannot sit down and say, well, it is after four months now, before harvest of any crop will be ready. That may be a natural law. But the person who is talking here is who, please? The Lord of harvest. There is no one who can claim to understand the dimensions of the harvest like him. There is no philosophy, there is no rationalization, there is no logic, there is no principle that can annul his statements when it comes to the matter of his harvest. So if he says his harvest is ready, please, what is that harvest? It's a ready harvest. I don't know what challenges you are coming across, even in the places that God has posted you to. I don't know an area that you think nothing good can come out of here. The Lord is saying, though naturally, though physically speaking, it appears like a difficult field. But as far as God is concerned, that very field where you are is a ready harvest. May the Lord open our eyes this morning. So if the harvest that the Lord, to which the Lord has sent us is a ready harvest, what is the challenge? That is, that is bringing to us. Bringing the sheep. Everybody says bringing the sheep. Say it again. As we approach our mission endeavor as from now, we must go with that mindset that on this field, I am going to bring in the sheep. As you go back to a place of work, you know, Henry Black Abbey talks about Every Sunday, like a commissioning Sunday for the workplace mission field, Abby. Yes. And I'm happy that I'm in a, an environment where that is being practicalized. As we go out from tomorrow, those difficult, you know, as I was thinking about the issue of, okay, giver, uh, pr- those who praise, those who go, and uh, that normal conventional thing we talk about, you know, the Lord made my heart so, to, to open, and I see that when a local church embarks on mission, those, there's a line of connection between those uh, faces as it were, between, between those responsibilities that has to do with mission. So, everybody a groaner, everybody a giver, everybody a goer. And that is bringing us to a level in which even in the workplace, you are the missionary there. Thank God for the work in the hinterland, that we will continue. But, but if the reward of our stewardship is more labor, more task, then as you go into the, uh, into the workplace, you are the missionary there. And you must ensure that you bring in the, the sheaves. The boss 
that was difficult, the member, uh, the, the colleague that was, that was difficult, that you always see and take off your eyes from today, the, Bible, the Lord says to you this morning, lift up your eyes and behold the field. They are ready. They are ready. I think about even Lagos as a place. You talk about all manner of people, the prostitutes, the area boys, you know, the, the, the people, the drug traffickers, and all manner of, of, of crime that is going on here. But it permits me to say to you this morning that as difficult as Lagos appears, the Lord is saying to you, is a ready field. That is, if you will go out from here as a missionary into those places, God is going to hold you accountable for the feed where he has positioned you. Has God positioned you in a place of authority? Has God positioned you in the politics? You know, it pains my heart when I see what happened to the issue of homosexuality, especially the fact that it was mentioned in our, uh, 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 our nation, our house, is a, is a milestone for homosexuals. And give it another 20, 50 years, I'm afraid that what was thrown out a few years ago will not become a law in Nigeria. But if it will not be, you as a political missionary must stand in your place. To bring in the harvest. Talk about corruption in Nigeria today. You talk about no wonder somebody says, if you want to blame anybody for Boko Haram, blame the church. And I think I agree with it. Why? Because this northern field has been ready for years. But we didn't bring in the sheep. We go there, make money. Thank God for all our fathers who went there and make money, plant some churches and they come back. We thank God for their lives. They did their best. But because there are yet more ground to, uh, to, to capture, it's an indication that we can't claim to have, to have arrived yet. If we bring in the sheaves, we realize that most of the problems we have in the nation today, they won't be there. Why we talk about what happened in the past and it's not okay, we must not make the same mistake. So wherever God has positioned you, is commissioning you, this morning, as a missionary to go there and to bring in the ships. The urgency of mission is, ref is revealed in this text in the fact that Jesus revealed to us his readiness. Harvest is ready, harvest is urgent because the bill for the world harvest is being fully paid. The equipping for it is being fully done also because Jesus poured out his spirit on, his, on, on the church in order to energize us, give us ministries in order to energize us to do that work. The affairs is ready and it's urgent because even the timing for the task is pretty short. You know, shower, show us, we have read about show us, we read about reapers here. We all have expiry dates. Whether we like it or not, we will expire. And even the field, the people out there that we are hoping to bring into the kingdom, they also will aspire. And so many have aspired like that and passed in through into hopeless eternity. The time is pretty short. Not that one alone. The harvest is, is, is urgent and is ready because hell enlarges itself day by day. I was talking about the homosexual the other time. I realized that now they can decide on what they want to hear. Now they can decide on what, what they want to, even the Bible they want to use. Now we have the uh, Queen James Bible. Abby, we have Queen James Bible, which is for the gays, the lesbians, the intersexuals, and the rest of this world, where they have, they have as, as extracted anything that will condemn their practice. And it's been published. If you go into Amazon or online, you will find it there. You know, it's been published. And so they can read the kind of Bible they like to read. And on and on like that. And it's funny that even in this Nigeria, that our culture and our law have us it. Yet, there is no censorship. There is no, there is, there is no, there is no control as it were. You know, they still propagate their message even as freely as possible. That is pathetic. But that may be your failure. That may be my failure. 
who refused to carry out our responsibility as uh, mission, missionaries, even in the workplaces. Missionaries on the social media, missionaries in all, all media networks, who will not allow a day or a time to pass without saying a word. Missionaries in the media, who will read an article in the paper. You know, I read an article the other time. I told my pastor, I said, Baba, you have to respond to this article. We will read an article in the paper about religious matter and will not cro- take away his eyes. And, we, and you have the power, you have the grace, you have the skill, you have the equipping in every ramification to answer. But we just look at it and say rubbish and go your way. Jesus was not like that. In this passage, you realize that when he saw just a woman from the, Samar- the Samaritan world, he, 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 st- he settled there and he continued. Uh, with her until when the entire nation is reached unto the Lord. You are going to bring the kingdom of God to pass? There, may be, there must be missionaries even on the social media. People will make it a responsibility. And if the Lord is opening your eye this morning as you tie up this, this, at this point, the Lord is opening your eye to see any of this dimension of ministry, you need to key into it properly. As the woman of Sychar, maybe we have individuals here, that the Lord has been talking to you. That you are the missionary I'm sending to your own people. Like this woman. And he has equipped you. you see, it, it, it interests me to realize that the woman of Sychar, you know, was bold enough. The Bible says he went into the city and he spoke to the men of the city. That's contrary to their culture. But by the reason of his background, by the reason of what he has been through, by the reason of his life, uh, life experience, he was comfortable and bold to approach the man. So whatever background you have come for, whatever opportunity God has given you in, uh, in the world, it's not for fun. It's in order for you to be able to stand at the gate as his children and defend the cause of the gospel. I would like for us to make up our mind this morning to refer the faith of evangelism. Aggressive one. If you are the woman of Sychar that God is sending to your own people, you must make the commitment this morning. You must come to the leadership to let them know so that you can be guided appropriately. It's my prayer that the Lord of, of, of Harvest will reach out to us and will help our heart to fire her in the ministry in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I would like for us to close our eyes, our hearts and our hearts as we pray to the Lord. I want to talk to God about what He's saying to you. Are you getting fed up because of the weight of the, of the work that God has called you onto? Can you this morning renew your devotion to the Lord? Can you this morning renew your devotion to the Lord? Are you out there? I want to say, Lord, from today, I want to be a missionary in the workplace. From today, these places you have placed me and you have commanded me to look up and see. I want to follow your own perception. I want to follow your own direction. If you are here this morning and want to make that decision, I would like to pray for you specially to recommission you. And I want such individual to just raise up your hands from wherever you are. I'm the missionary in the workplace. I'm the missionary in the political world. I'm in the missionary to my own people. I'm the one that the Lord is sending even to the people from among whom he has asked me, I mean, I, I've come out. If you are in this assembly and you want to make such a decision, I want to see your hands up wherever you are so that we can pray together. Thank you very much. Now we are round up as we pray right now. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the work that you have brought to us and the challenge that you have brought to us as a church. But I pray for the New Estates uh, Baptist Church. This-